Hello and welcome to the second part of users mental models. Last week we went over the first part of the diagram which was focused on searches that you don't really know what you're looking for yet, also called browse or discovery. This week we're going to be talking about the second part of that diagram which is when you do have an idea of what you're looking for. Now the good thing is there's a lot of the same things that are already involved so if you want to check out some more in-depth analysis of the user's mental model, I would check out the first video. Today we're really going to focus on what is the step and the process that people use to do known item search. And we're going to do this with a task just like last week and we are still going to do the think aloud or the talk aloud mechanism where I talk through what I'm going through while I'm doing the search itself. So with that, let's go check out that model. A little similar to what you saw last week, actually a lot of similar since it's the same thing. So again, this link to this document is going to be in the description below if you want to check that out. So we are going to be only focusing on the left side of this model today. So you'll notice some of the things that people are looking at when they have a known item search are, are they looking at text? Are they looking at images? Are they looking for specific topics or colors? There's, there's something already in their mind that they have, right? The other thing that you have to keep in mind is when people are doing these kinds of searches, they almost always start, start with the search engine first. And that's because they already kind of have an idea of what they're looking for and they just want to cut to the chase. But what that means is today we're going to be focusing a little bit more on the actual search engine itself. And so what that's going to look like is what are, what are the languages? What are the words? What are the thought processes that people have when they are constructing a query for any search engine? So with that, we're going to go over to the example now. Today we are going to be using the task that my niece loves to construct crafts based on those little rubber bands. Uh, so I am searching for those types of rubber bands. Now, let's say I am from Pennsylvania. True story, I'm originally from Pennsylvania. And I speak Pennsylvania Dutch. That doesn't mean I speak a different language, it just means it's a different dialect of, of English. The same goes for a lot of different languages. So I go to Michael's, which is a popular craft uh, search engine, if you will. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my Pennsylvania Dutch word for this because maybe I don't know the word rubber band. Maybe I only know gum band if that is what I am used to speaking. What that is called is my natural language. When someone uses their natural language, it's usually when you're in a search engine, you're like, what's the, what's the word for that thing? When you do that, that's when you're reverting back to your natural language. This is not to be confused with natural language processing. They are similar and we will definitely go into NLP in a later video. But for this natural language, just think of it as the natural discourse, the words that you use every day with each other. That's usually what people use in a search bar and especially when they're trying to figure out what's the word for this thing when they're doing a search. So let's go ahead and try this out. So I'm going to go ahead and type in gum band. Go ahead and execute that search and see what happens. Okay, so you'll see that it has no results and it did try to help me out, right? So this is, uh, you know, almost like a search aid where it's trying to say, well, you know, I don't have gum band, but I have something called gum banner. Now let's look at the metadata on this first item. So gum banner and it's fondant gum paste mold banner. So first of all, there's a few different words between gum and banner, so I'm not quite sure why they auto-corrected or auto-suggested gum banner from what I typed in. But they still didn't give me what I wanted. I'm looking for gum bands, and I'm not really finding what I want. So normally what people do is they just go to Google. So let's go to Google. Okay, so this is where it gets really fun. So your task for later is going to be very similar to this. Let's try to fool Google. It's actually not that hard if you know what you're looking for. So I'm going to type in gum band yet again. Now the first thing I'm going to see, again, on the first paint above the fold, remember we talked about in the last video, it's basically what shows up first on the screen. I'm seeing a lot of things about music. So Google is basically saying, okay, I see band 
in the words that they put into the search engine. So they're, they're thinking it's more on the musical context rather than something like crafts. So I'm not finding what I want here. So what I would do is maybe go to shopping since I am looking for a purchase. Now, before we go there, let me show you, if you go slightly below the fold, you'll actually see gum band. And it says that it's chiefly a Pennsylvania and West Virginia rubber band. Well, that's great. So Google should know what I'm talking about, right? I mean, it's only the second thing in the search results. It should know what I'm talking about. Well, let's go to shopping and see what happens. So we go to shopping and I'm seeing stardust, bubblegum, things I don't want to think about here. Okay, so none of these are giving me any inclination that Google knows what I'm talking about. Now remember, I did not go through that many results. Most search results, people only look at between three to five to 10 search results before they start a different search or try to refine their search. It does depend on the context or the domain that the person is searching in, but typically they don't go that far because they don't wanna waste their time. So here, what I'm seeing is my word, gum band is not actually showing up in Google or Michaels. I'm really disappointed as a user and I'm not gonna find what I want for my task, which is to give my niece a nice present for her birthday. She wants a craft and I can't get that for her. So I'm a little disappointed. Now let's just go back and look at this from a perspective of a user's non-natural language. Maybe you are not from uh, Pennsylvania or West Virginia and you call this a rubber band. Let's go ahead and execute that search. You can see I get lots of results for rubber bands and they are very similar to what I'm looking at uh, for my task. So that's good. Now let's just make sure Google's not broken. And let's say rubber band. And I'm getting exactly what I'm expecting. So you'll notice that I'm not necessarily clicking into anything at this point. I'm just kind of verifying that I have the right words and the right language that I'm using. The problem is not all users have the same language, whether it's Chinese, Japanese, English, Spanish, or it's just a different dialect of those languages. People don't always use the same words to describe something. And that's something that we have to be very careful about when we're doing information architecture. And honestly, this is something that a lot of information architects do not do. And when we get into the semantics and knowledge graph section of all of these videos, this will be very, very important. So please take note because honestly, if you can do this right, you have a very, very nice information architecture suite in your back pocket. So with that, let's jump. All right, so we are back. That was a very quick way of looking at the user's mental model for a known item search, but it usually is quick because I already know what I'm looking for. And if I'm not finding it quickly, I'm going to know that very quickly. So if you like this video, please subscribe, ring bells, email me, what have you. Please put some comments in the description below because I love talking to all of you. I think it's very exciting that, you know, so many people have been engaged in this. Um, so with that, let's talk about your task. This is really exciting. So I love to stump Google. It's one of my most favorite things to do. And I think I've gotten pretty good at it. So user's natural language, as you can imagine, is really hard to get everybody's natural language included into a search engine such as Google. However, if you're working on information architecture that's smaller than Google, it's definitely something you should think about and you should consider because you can actually get at that user natural language and you can do it effectively. So we're gonna talk about that in an upcoming video. But for now, what I would like you to do is Go stump Google, go stump any search engine that you would like and leave a comment in the section below. What word did you use and what does it really mean? And did you actually get any results? And I hope that you don't get any results. You might think, well, that's kind of strange. The whole purpose of this is to stump Google and see what we can get and learn from this and how we can then put this into practice, improving all the other search engines that we might be working on. All right, so with that, I think that this was a quick video, but I'm trying to be a little bit more concise in what we're doing. The other thing is stay tuned for the next video where we're going to talk about users persona. 
You might think, well, I thought we were going to talk about, you know, semantics and technology. Absolutely. But these are the foundations. If you don't get these right, it doesn't matter how smart your machines are. It doesn't matter how smart your architecture is. It's not going to be effective. And I will also say I have a, I think, more of a unique take on how to create user personas. It's I think more equitable, which is making sure that people are not put into stereotypes, which I think is incredibly important and is sometimes overlooked when people are making user personas. So stay tuned for that. That's the next video. And I will catch you on the flip side, probably dating myself, but I'll catch you later. Thanks.